right, this is our little model of solar flares here for at the lab, and this is a Farnsworth Hirsch Meeks fuser. And it's basically our pet star. It lets us keep the star in a jar. What we've got is the it's electrostatic confinement of energy, and it's like a neon sign on steroids. And what we're doing is highly accelerating particles into the middle, and we're energizing them, and that creates plasma. And plasma is the same as fire or the center of a giant thermonuclear ball like the sun. This is a, actually a very little tiny star under glass. And this allows us to control the field a lot, be able to change power levels all the way from down very low like this, where you can see the little trumpets in there. And we'll turn out the lights and let you get a good shot of that. But we can show the little trumpets of energy because the energy is cycling around like a donut. And when it squishes together at the top and when it comes together at the bottom, you can see the little trumpets, and that's what we use to demonstrate what solar flares really look like, because they're, it's a stretched band of energy cycling around, and on the sun, when those snap, they shoot particles out into space, and that's what causes problems here on Earth. It's where we get space weather. So, uh, do, you, do you think of it like a, sort of like two magnets that are creating a field, and then something yes. changes? Yes, um, more like one magnet creating a field. Um, the Earth is a big, giant magnet. And the sun is like a whole bunch of magnets all thrown together, and it's constantly changing. The sun has a primary magnetic field, but there's so much happening. And the, the sun isn't like the Earth, where we have a liquid core with a solid shell. The sun's liquid and gas all the way through, so everything's very nebulous and changing and moving. And it's just the sunspots and solar flares and coronal mass ejections and all that are to the sun what thunderstorms and regular weather are here. It's just part of the day-to-day -day life cycle of the environment. So what causes it to finally, it's like one magnet, visualize your core sticking out. Can you find that a little bit? One sticking out? The core. You want to talk to it? Yeah, just okay. in a few buttons. This is good video right here. Yeah, that's, 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 we, we've had people watch paint dry. Yeah. All right. All right. Oh. You don't have a tally one. It's freaking me out. Mark. All right. So it's all about magnets. It's corona flares or corona mass ejection, solar flares, sunspots. All of that is just weather. It's solar weather. And on the sun, it's based largely on magnetic fields and the interactions of magnetic fields. It's unimaginable amounts of energy. And when it builds up in a localized area, like we would have a thunderstorm, on the sun you have a solar flare. And it builds up and it snaps and it shoots this energy out into space. And this comes and interacts with the Earth, which is also a big giant magnet. And it interacts with our magnetic, our magnetic field, our space weather, the atmosphere, everything. Deflects the most of it though. So when you say it snaps, in my mind, I'm getting the impression that there's a flow yes. of some sort. So yes. explain what causes the flow and then snap. The changing environment of the sun. The sun isn't like the Earth, where we have a nice solid planet with a liquid center. The sun is a giant, never ending, non stop thermonuclear bomb going off all the time. The sun is a balance. The gravity of the sun is trying to crush everything together and the explosions happening inside, which are actual, it's nuclear fusion, is exploding constantly, pushing it out. And that's why the sun's a ball, because that's the balanced shape, just like a soap bubble. It's the exact same as a soap bubble. Where a soap bubble, you have air pressure inside and air pressure outside, and they're trying to push against each other, and they balance out, and you get a sphere. That's how the sun's working. It's a lot more violent, though. And because it's exploding and crushing constantly, everything's changing, it's always moving, it's very nebulous. So you get these localized areas of different pressures, different temperatures, different electromagnetic phenomena, and it, it's always trying to balance itself out, and it's doing this all the time. There's solar flares all the time. It happens several times a week. They come in a cycle of about 11 years, and they go up and they go down, and sometimes we'll have several a week, sometimes we might go a week or more without having anything. Really big ones turn into coronal mass ejections, where huge amounts of, of atomic matter and particles and stuff shoot out into space 
and they impact life on Earth. Most of it is shielded off by our atmosphere. Some of it gets through, not a lot. Um, we have a very strong magnetic field around the Earth that protects us from a lot. It becomes a real problem for things like uh, people traveling out in orbit, like to the moon or especially to Mars, where these can actually be hazardous to the, the environment that the astronauts are in because they don't have their own atmosphere. They've just got their own little air tank that they're breathing. They don't have like a giant miles and miles of atmosphere to protect them or any kind of a magnetic field. So it shoots right through the spacecraft and it can do bad things to astronauts. So show me what you're doing with your demonstration. Okay, so we've got two things that we're going to share with you today that are fun little toys. And one of them I've had in my hand is uh, we've got a super electromagnet in the other room that is so powerful that it's actually more powerful than the Earth's magnetic field in that one spot. It's, it's thousands and thousands of times more powerful than the Earth's magnetic field. And we can use that to, it's so strong we can actually crush quarters down to the size of a dime. And we can crush dimes down to the size of a pea. And this is a fun toy. It's a great way to show just what you can do with electromagnetism. And behind me, we have a star in a jar. This is a Farnsworth Meeks Fuser. Heart wait, was it? Farnsworth. Farnsworth. This is, Mark. This is a Farnsworth Hirsch Meeks Fuser. It was invented by Philo T. Farnsworth, who's the same guy that gave you a job. He invented television. And this is our pet star. It's a star in a jar. It's a Inertia, it's an electrostatically confined plasma ball. And a plasma, just like in here, I can turn it up so you can see it. The same plasma that is in there is the same plasma that you see on the surface of the sun or fire or any time you have an ionized gas. That's plasma, the fourth state of battery. And this allows us to control it. So we can turn it all the way up like that. And it's really pretty. It's a fun toy. And we can take it all the way down. When we turn out the lights and turn it down, you can actually see the little jets on the top and bottom right there, the little trumpets. And that's where the magnetic field in here, which is like a, like a donut, it's like a toroid, it comes together at the top, it comes together at the bottom. And that's where it focuses those particles. You can see the little trumpets sticking out. And that band of energy is very similar to the bands of energy and how they work on the sun. Magnetic fields like to be in lines, and those lines are called flux. But, Thing. No, 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 just oh, that last sentence. Yeah. <laughs> just that last sentence. All right. The bands, you'll see this if you go on places like spaceweather.com or look at the Wikipedia article on sunspots, you'll see pictures of these bands of energy. And those bands are lines of magnetic flux. If you've ever done the, the science experiment as a kid with the iron filings on a piece of paper and you see the, the bands around a bar magnet and stuff like that, those are lines of magnetic flux. That is the force lines of a magnet. And those bands are what you see coming out of the sun, and there's, they're everywhere. They're, so you basically recreate them? Yeah, we can create them right here. This just allows you to see them. They're always there. The hard part about electromagnetism is being able I mean, to show people. Can you tell me what each part represents? Like the coil represents? Oh, in here, the, the coil yeah. and the, the outer shell and that, those are just electrodes that allow us to create and shape the electromagnetic field. Um, that's that's just electrodes. The center one is the high voltage electrode, and then the outer grid is the ground electrode. That's why you can actually touch this. Even though inside there there's thousands of volts of energy, you can touch this and it's totally safe. And we use the two grids to accelerate the electrostatic charge and the electromagnetic energy from one grid to the other, and that's how we crush them together. It starts at the outside and slams together in the middle. Now if you follow me, I will show you let me get you touching the dial or just turning it up a little bit. Come on. That's right, baby. Turn that knob. Turn it. Turn it real good. You good? I'm getting a warm white shirt. You? Oh, Lord. <laughs> Simulation of you turning a fucking knob. What do you want? <laughs> Come on, I need a nap break. Help me out. You need a what? A nap break. Help me out. Okay. This is our Farnsworth Hirsch user, and it's a simulation of a star. It lets us show people the basics of inertial electrostatic confinement and some fun stuff with plasma physics. Go ahead, right. get off the TV. <laughs> <laughs> 
A rolling thing around here is you're a hack, get off the internet. We actually have it on t-shirts. You want more light? The magnets are going to be cooler. That's, that's where you're going to want to do. This is pretty, but the magnets are shocking awesome. She's worth. watch it tonight. You stick your finger in there and he gets that on that camera and there's going to be like a million hits on YouTube tomorrow. How long did it take you to build this? Uh, I didn't build it. Mike Feldman built it with uh, the help of Paul Kidwell and he tinkered with it. I don't know. It probably took him a couple months. This is one of the Geek Group members built it. And then Mr. Kidwell, who's another Geek Group member, took it and rebuilt the whole front floor. It's science now. This is how we get the girls. Now you're going to be like, hey baby, check out my big fears. <laughs> That's right, it's hot. Hey there guys, I'm Chris Bowden. Welcome to today's Captain's Vlog. Here we've got viewer mail. Something from Amazon for Moose. What do we got? So we just had big fun. Channel 13 came. <laughs> we just did a thing for Channel 13 on solar flares and that was fun. This is... It's from Alan Sterling. Hi, Chris. Due to your obvious concern with the global problem of the zombie apocalypse, I am adding this book to your geek lending library. Cheers, Dibla. It's sweet. Thank you. All right, so we also got mail from Oneida Air Systems. They sent us a dust deputy. And this is a cool thing. We're going to be doing videos on these. They're really neat. But if you own a shot vac, you need one of these. This, this is like the, it's, it's the killer app for a shot vac. What it does is if you look inside, they look like this. This is the simplest, most basic one they have. And this is one that the geeks want because this lets you build your own stuff. And that's just cool. It's basically, it's, it's, a, it's, this, it, it's a cyclonic separator. It works on centrifugal force. And what happens is you put the vacuum up here. And this is an airtight seal that goes down like a, a bucket, like a five gallon bucket, works great. And you just drill a hole, drill a few little holes, put some caulk on, bolt it down, you're set. And the vacuum sucks out here, so you're, and that's pulling air in here through this hole. And it spins around and the centrifugal force holds it to the wall until it runs out of energy and then falls out the bottom. And there's no air moving in here because this is sealed to the bucket, so it just falls down and then clean air goes out and they separate almost all the stuff. And if you're doing, especially with stuff where it's dusty, like we've got sand to contend with, um, sawdust, things like that, this is the greatest thing ever. Just, oh my God, they're awesome. You can get these locally at Woodcraft out on 28th Street in Grand Rapids, they sell them. And one just like this is like 40 bucks. They're crazy cheap. So yeah, the, the amount that you spend buying one of these, you will save in the first year of just shot vac filters alone. We, these things for us paid for themselves in easily within a week because shot vac filters are expensive and with these you'll use a lot less of them. All 
All right, so that's viewer mail for the day. Now we're going to get to work. We're going to be productive, and I have absolutely no idea what the hell we're doing yet. So Dave and I are just going to go shoot a game of pool and figure that out. All right, guys, so it's 18.46 hours. And can I see those? Check it out. Check it out, guys. 200 quarters. That's 200 more going off to be packaged. Yay, we're doing all kinds of new packaging design. There's a whole thing, but 200 more. A little bit more fundraising, helping out. You could be getting one of these. Today has been amazingly boring. We <laughs> spent all day fixing things. Everything was broken. Spent all day fixing it. Was not a terribly exciting day at all. That's why there's not much video. So what are you doing? Fixing stuff? What are you fixing? Okay. See? It's thrilling. The whole day's like that. Um, but Batman and I got to make stuff on the CNC. He's actually getting really good at the CNC stuff, which is cool. Oh, all right. Sorry it wasn't a terribly exciting day. Tomorrow, hopefully, will be more interesting. But hey, it was just a boring Thursday. Eh. There's a whole thing about to go down with Liz. She's doing a Kickstarter project, which she's going to tell me all about on the drive home, and I'll tell you guys about tomorrow. So, yeah. All right, you guys have fun. I'm Chris Bowden. You're not. That's a captain's blog. Boring day. <laughs>